Hey guys, how's it going? I'm going to narrate the first minute of this just because of all the conversation that was going on with personal information. So this is a 70 Super Beetle that has been sitting in this space for over 30 years. The roof is leaking on the garage. It was somebody's project that, of course, never got completed. So it was offered to us to go and save and salvage whatever we can from it. I'm just giving a quick little overview showing you where it was in its location. We're going to drag this thing up on the trailer. Uh, it has one issue that we did not expect, that the steering wheel is in the locked position. We're trying to find keys for it. We could not find any. This is just quick, just again, looking over the general condition of all the bits and pieces, seeing what's in it. Again, it's a Super Beetle. Super Beetles do not have much value in the VW world. They have value, but it's probably the lowest on the food chain. And the fact that it's convertible makes it a little higher, but still. Not something you would want to restore, especially in this condition. So Brian's going to hop in. We can't find the key. The steering is locked on a slight angle. He's going to give her a quick kind of shot to see if he can get her to go pop. You see how well that's working. Not for lack of trying. <laughs> But I did bring something with me to help, which is called uh, Go Jacks. I bought a set of uh, Harbor Freight uh, jacks. They go under the wheels, and it allows you to kind of roll it around. But the surface that we're on is pretty rough. Plus, trying to get it up on a trailer, the jacks are too wide for that. So we're just going to give her. We already got her halfway out and up to the wheels. You can see the wheels are caught on the angle. But it's starting to go too far. Left of your screen. So we give her a stop. So we get the jacks out. We'll just gentle persuasion. But as far as we could, we can get rid of one of the two. And leave the Brian side still connected. And now we can start winching the rest of the way on Right, now we're back at the garage we could take our time and actually be able to see it a little bit better so it's been off the road since 88 I'm pretty much parked there since that period of time and that garage was leaking it was just probably actually would have been better off sitting outside than it was in there because it has rot on it that i have never seen on a beetle i've never seen the center of a hubcap Right out like that. Or the rim. Look at the rim's just gone. That's not going to hold there, is it? <laughs> That's a mess on the trailer, too. So I have a 70 convertible, which is a standard Beetle. This is a Super Beetle. Essentially, from the windshield back. They're pretty much the same, but the front is totally different. Fenders are different, hoods different. The seats actually look decent in it. A bunch of little things that you wouldn't think would be useful. Visors, mirror. There's another deck lid back there. And Super Beetles do not have the value that standard beetles do so if you're going to restore something you would want to do a standard if if money is what your issue is I walked in front of my alarm got a spare and I might be able to use that for that right rear corner just to get it up in the air the front tires rolled when it went up on the trailer the steering is missing the keys. Steering's locked, so that's why we're kind of fighting because they're on an angle. We tried breaking the lock that we were there, but didn't have much luck. I figure 
It is a home for critters. I don't want to leave this parked in here. <laughs> let's get, let's go see if it turns first. Oh yeah, awesome. It turns a little anyway. Want to see if we can start it? Well, I'm going to need to be able to get power to the starter. And the power wire, the starter is right about here and about two feet is its location. And that might be a little bit of an issue with that crap in a way. So I think I'm going to take a minute. We're going to unwinch it from the trailer, take the chains off, possibly get a jack under there. We'll jack the corner up, get that tire out of there and see if we can have access to it. Let's see how well this works. Hopefully it stops by the time it gets to the door. stand under it. Got to reset. <laughs> hey, I don't think she's going to roll. Our starter is right back there. You can see those wires. Those are the wires we need to access. I just think it's just Gently get that heat tube out of our way so we can access the starter. Any mice? Mice, I might scream a little bit. If a snake comes out, it might leave a little bit of a stain. Right, go. Now I can see some wires. Somebody added two, those two red ones are just power going probably up to a fuse box or a radio. There's a little thin wire behind that. I'm not going to be able to get in there to show you, but it's right, right about there. I'm going to put the jumper lead on. You got to get power to it. The battery normally goes here. The hot lead and the ground. I can jump a pack hook. hooked up to that. Well, it's already paying for itself. It was free, so. 12 cents. We are up. Yeah, let's go see if we just get any kind of. <laughs> Good. I get some other stuff to do before we start getting into that. Got to check oil level. I want to jack the back of the thing up so. The whole thing is sitting level too because when you dribble fuel in it's always going to just go to those two cylinders kind of want to have it level so let's get that taken care of yeah i got it level let's see what it's got for oil in it if anything it has turned that far
He's over full. Hmm. Might have gas in it. Sometimes when the fuel pumps go. It's up and above by about about a quart over for the effective caution on an error error on caution all right we'll go with that uh, i'm gonna pull the oil out of it and put some fresh stuff in it just so we can uh, make sure we're not gonna blow it up if that is indeed not oil if it's 50 percent old gas not very good lubricating and i like to save this engine if i can because i have a a vehicle I want to put it in. I gotta see how goo we get out of this. Let's round it off the nut. It's just a drain plug. Why do you have to do that? Why? Really? It's a drain plug. That's not a breaker bar I couldn't fix. And then some. You know what it is? It's missing the washer. So it was leaking. So somebody kept cranking down on that and cranking down on that. And they stripped the nut out. <laughs> Did you duck? <laughs> that made you jump, didn't it? That's why you stripped it out. Each one of these, you can take the whole, the whole straightener down too, which should be done at some point. But water! That's why the oil level's so high. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> yeah, that's a attractive looking uh, pile of goo coming out of there, isn't it? Good thing they didn't run it with that crap in there. And I'm pulling the whole strainer out. Once I saw that water. That's not a good sign. Did get them all? Yeah, I might need a, might have needed an oil change. There's a, a screen up here. That is the only oil filter on these. So let's come down. That is pretty sludgy. Well, it's a good thing we did it. Nothing saying the engine's any good, but I don't want to kill it before. We even give it a shot, right? I'm going to clean all this up. I'm going to go get another kit back on it and get some oil on it. 35 year old engine snot. Yeah, I ended up replacing the whole strainer. It was so packed. And I had another one. This is yard sale oil. From today, actually. Went around. You go to moving sales, they generally what they do is they put all like the cleaning products and oils and paints and car stuff in the suburban homes. They usually have a free pile out in front of the, the yard sale. So I always grab the New quarts of oil, half full quarts of oil, that kind of thing. And they're good for stuff like this. And this stuff is not going to be in, in here for 3,000 miles. This engine's going to need a... We're pretty much using it as a flush.
I would suspect we don't have spark. Just a hunch. I'm gonna pop that air cleaner off of there too, and I want to dump some oil down the intake. I could pull the plugs, but on a VW, there's a tin. There's there's cooling tin between the plug hole and the spark plug. And it's a little hard to get oil actually down into the cylinder, especially when it's in the car. You could do it, you put a hose down inside there and kind of get in there, but. All right, just gonna dump them right down the carb and then we'll try spinning the engine over, see how it sounds. And which one of these is less? This one. <laughs> I, get, I get to use up all my little leftovers. Should average out to about a 10.30. <laughs> So yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna put some oil down the cylinders. And generally they have to crank for a little bit when they've been sitting for a long time because whatever cylinder has the valve that was open on, actually two of them, will have a valve open on them. The surface of the valve and the surface of the seat get some pitting going around it. And it just takes a little bit of a while from the motion going back and forth for it to start to build compression. That's why sometimes you see it cranking, cranking, cranking. And people are like, shove the ether in. It's not gonna make any difference. It's not cranking not because it doesn't have fuel. It's cranking because and not starting because it just hasn't built compression up yet. So it takes a while to get it going. We're about halfway up on the stick. That's decent. I don't have an oil cap for it because there wasn't one on it. That might explain why I had a little bit of water in the oil because on a convertible, the, the cooling fins are right above it. And the garage had a big section of the roof was missing. So it may have been just so lucky enough that water was coming straight down. Let's see if we can wiggle that air cleaner off of there. There we go. Probably just shove a rag in there. Keep... Now that I already through dirt over it, right? Let's see if that throttle even moves. It does. That's a good sign. All right. Uh, I think actually, can we crank it right now? We might be able to be good enough to do so. Start button, hold on. Let's see, we're gonna listen to it and <laughs> that actually sounds pretty good. I'm listening for the the resistance on each cylinder. Sometimes it'll be a room, 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 and you can tell that cylinder is skipping compression. This one sounded pretty even on all four. Let's go buzz it around a little bit more. All right, I want to get away on it. Hold on. Get ahead of myself. That ought to make her smoke a little. There, let's see if I can kind of... The edge of my wire off, hold on. get set up we got to run power back here to the coil again I don't have a key for this thing so we're gonna run a jumper wire coming up from the back and we're gonna put 12 volts to the coil and then we're gonna check for spark and I did find the oil cap it was leaning down in there let's fill the fuel bowl I ran a power wire up like I said and I connected the other end of the starter button to it. Do a little. Go for 
for the engine itself. I gotta refill that. So this is 12 volts. You hear the starter relay clicking? I mean the uh, carburetor fuel shut off. Clicking. Let's go. Here we get. I am pretty confident we don't have a spark. Let's go check. Yeah, I got a plug sitting up there, so we're gonna go again, put power to it. And we'll give her a spin, see what we get. I didn't see anything. That's a no. Power off, so we're gonna blow up the coil. Yes, I've done it. There's one dry looking distributor. The light might be bleaching you out, but it's good. Yeah, look at all the corrosion on that. On the post, we'll throw some grease on there. At one time, that was grease. The gap is open. You can see how cruddy those are. So, I'll switch hands. Hold on. All the time, you need two hands. For three. Why don't you need to hold that open for me? Get rid of the green schmegma growing on them. I'm do that a couple times. I'm gonna rotate the sandpaper until I get it clean when the crap's coming off of it. Yeah, they were too corroded. I ended up having to go with in a file. Let's go spin the button like that. Actually, it's got to go a little lower. And it'll get on the tab over there. That's, that's overkill, but... Hook that up and see if we get spark now. Let's see if that did it. I don't see anything. There we go. It's almost trying to ready to start. <laughs> go put that plug back together, get in the stand, and let's give her. Drum roll, please. <laughs> Go give her a little bit more fuel right in it.
<laughs> she runs! She smokes! I filled the carver up again. So we can get a little bit more runtime out of it. it sounded like it was a little clacky at first. Seems like it's going away. <laughs> Check for oil pressure, that's what the, the light is for. The light was staying out when I was grounded to the oil pressure switch. As soon as it shut off, the oil pressure went away and the light came on. So I have oil pressure, which is good. And it just used up whatever gas was left in it. In the car. Nice. Seems fairly decent. A little flacky. Uh, who knows, last time the valves were adjusted, you know? And the smoke cleared up. And again, the smoke is due to us. Me, I'll take the blame. We're putting oil down inside there and lubing up this top end a little. That seems like it's going to be a good engine. For something that's running on all four, uh, we've got other stuff to go look at, but at least it does the, the main part of it, which is running. Yeah, let's fire it up again and try popping it in gear. <laughs> Why not, right? I think the clutch is probably stuck. Pedals might not even work, so... The clutch pedal was fighting me a little too and then it finally went.
gas pedal doesn't work up front. Let's go grab it a little higher. Just stuck just a little bit. But it does work. I think the clutch still works. Not the power wire right off of it. And now it's out of gas again. Let's see if we have any better luck in reverse. Might be able to break them loose that way. The other part was, I just noticed the uh, emergency brake was left in the on position for 35 years. So that's not a good sign. Sledgehammer might make a submit. Let's give her a couple of who's your daddies. You didn't think that was going to work either, did you? <laughs> Let's go bump it in gear. Again. We'll see if that side. you like to be in life.
Get that side freed up. Probably gonna go put the spare on that one. And maybe do the same on the other side, beat on the other side so we can get this thing to roll. Hey, if it works once, right? The rest of the car is getting lighter too. I think a little start up and put her in gear will fix that one too. So we make a little room. You want a pool? I want to see if we can spray that gas pedal. Maybe get the gas pedal to move. And here's the other car that I want to put back together. This is a '70 standard Beetle, not a Super Beetle. And again, it's got you know issues all the way around, but much solid, more solid of a car. But the same scenario, it sat in a garage for 35 years. A girl was driving it, got rear-ended, hence the the funky trunk line that it has there. And when it got rear-ended, it knocked the distributor cap forward. And when it did that, it broke the rotor, but the cap just popped right back into its normal location. Couldn't tell. So with some fuel clean the points, this one fired right up too. So it's Pretty much an original deal. It's painted once before and some body work done on it, but it's got dings, dangs, bends, you know, rust. Original top is on it. Interior's decent. You know, so it's a it's still needs a bunch of love, but much more further along than the other car is. So the other car would be more of a donor for this and some other projects. See all the little stuff. Broken handle there, just it's all the littles. Good. Hopefully that one will hold air. Better chance holding air than the, than the other one. Yeah, this one's got a, the original convertible top, which is still in good condition. I don't think it's a rip in it anywhere, actually. And the interior is fairly decent. But between the two of them, 
it definitely should be uh, enough to bring it back to life. This is the spare out of that other VW, but the valve stem was no good. Hence why it was the spare and not on the car. As a matter of fact, I didn't think all the valve stems were no good on that car. When we got it, we tried blowing them up. And I think we had to run a screw in the center of one of them. That made you jump, didn't it? This might be a tight squeeze for some of you bigger dudes. Well, we all try getting down in here though. Let's see. Hold on, you're caught. I can get. So, that's the roller. And that's what we need to move. That right there. Yeah, we definitely see it hasn't moved in a while. We'll give that a bunch of love. And we can have everything else too while we're here. Well, to give her a good soaking too. I think I'll probably have to get a hammer to tap on that guy. Back and forth and see if we can get the free up brake pedal. No. Clutch moves. The emergency brake works though. So. Let's get that out of her way. There we go. Oh, I'm eating the you're eating a kisser, a guy you're eating a kisser. Alright, go tap on that a little, see if we can get that to move. Yeah, if you can see, let's go try with pliers first. There we go. Thing is, too, you don't want to let it stick. <laughs> I want to get it pretty free. I might a pair of ice grips wouldn't hurt. I think I'm going to go with a get an air gun. And blow some of the the loose debris out of there. I don't want you guys in there because I don't want you nothing in your eyes. And we get and the result something like that. It's like the base of the pedal could probably use a little too. Might break off but that's alright. Still put our foot right on the roller. problem is we got a locked steering wheel and we do not have a key. I tried a couple of just generic VW keys that so I wasn't having it. I don't know. GM something in there. It'd be funny if it's in the ashtray. them with them or they're hidden in the car somewhere that I'm not able to find them. So let's uh, drill and yank that sucker right out of there. It's not doing us any good anyway.
boss showed up. She brought her own snacks. They good? Could have picked a better spot to eat those, you know. Well, we now have the factory replacement key. all the pieces we need you might have to get rid of that oh with a saw And did a little bit of cleanup before we tried moving it off the trailer because there was about 50 pounds at least 50 pounds of rust these are extra rails that convertibles get on a regular beetle they don't have it on convertibles they put an extra support rail because the roof isn't in there this one's ready to fall off in the very beginning i was jacking it up you can see it was just squishy but i'll figure i'll leave all that rust right where it wants to be for now I don't want to take away from the value of the car you know I think we can get her off of jack stands somebody's not impressed now <laughs> Ooh, lady mistake of hitting the brake. That might be a good thing.
feel my teeth. I think it hit the floor. <laughs> Jam it in the first. Get him out of gas. Get him out of gas. She's alive. All right, guys, I had some fun trying to fart around with this thing just to get it running. And uh, actually, that's pretty good. Everything shot on it, of course, but um, again, it was free. We got to save some other cars. And uh, after sitting, we end up saying 31 years in that wet garage. And it still comes back. So with that, guys, I'm going to go sign off. I want to thank you all for kind of hanging out with me and having some fun with Rusty Junk. I'll see you on the next one. Till then, later. <laughs>